What we are experiencing in this world, the truth of it, is so much stranger than any fiction story than you could ever, ever imagine. It's not even imaginable in many cases. To achieve a complete mind, study the art of science, study the science of art, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. And when I kind of heard that for the first time, I started really recognizing, I think, what he really meant by that, which is that your reality and our reality is this beautiful geometric scope of experience. And that scope of experience can span across what we refer to as geometry and what we refer to as music and what we refer to as light and what we refer to as sound and what we refer to as matter and what we refer to as, as the, the geometry of space-time. All of it, biology, chemistry, is all connected. You know, I could make an argument that says that mathematics in its applied form is geometry. So therefore, applied geometry is physics. Applied physics would then just be chemistry and applied chemistry would be biology, and applied biology would be psychology, and applied psychology would be sociology, and applied sociology would be philosophy, and applied philosophy comes back to mathematics. So it's this total connection across all of these seemingly disparate disciplines in our life experience that leads us to recognize that, wait a minute, it's not all separate at all, it's all one. And that geometry in all of its different manifestations and forms across all of those different disciplines and specialties is turning us back to recognize the oneness of the universe. And then that introduces this concept of who created it. <laughs> because the thing that with geometry, when I started getting into it, and there's something beautiful you have on your wall just outside Metatron's cube. Right? And most people probably don't know, unless they're into geometry, what the significance of Metatron's cube is. A lot of people don't realize that you can form literally out of that one structure all of the platonic solids. Not only all the platonic solids, but all of the Archimedean solids by making another form of Metatron's cube, just offsetting it by 15 degrees, and then having a 12-point perspective, you can have all of the Archimedean, all the Catalan solids. Virtually every single geometric form that exists in the universe can be made in its regular form out of that one structure of Metatron's cube. So all creation comes from this. And this is one of the things that I did. I took a 24-point perspective. So if you took four Metatron's cubes, right? So you've got six points on each one that form this hex hexagonal form. If you do that in rotation so that you've got a 24-point, so you're just multiplying mm -hmm. six by four, mm -hmm. So you're creating four point perspective against the six points and you connect all the lines of that. It looks like an entirely mess, like a gigantic mess of entropic lines that you could, it gets really confusing because you're like, what the heck am I looking at? But if you can put your consciousness into those lines, the complexity of all those lines, you might be able to see the shape of a square. You might also see the shape of a triangle. And most people can. You might see the shape of a pentagon because it's all in there. You might also see the shape of a, a hexagon or you know all of the other potential shapes that could exist in polygonal form. But can you also then see a tetrahedron, which is a three-dimensional version of a triangle? Mm -hmm. One way to easily say this. Can you see a cube? Can you see a dodecahedron? Can you see an icosahedron? Can you see a cuboctahedron? Can you see a rhombi cuboctahedron? Can you see a, a Durer solid? Can you see all of the different shapes that are there? And the degree that you can recognize through pattern recognition and then bold those lines, you are uplifting your consciousness and your ability to perceive higher dimension. So the more geometric forms you can recognize and track by looking in this mess of lines that looks totally entropic and it makes no sense whatsoever, and then bold those, to me, I call that a higher form of consciousness quotient. So the more of those lines you can recognize, you're pushing the boundary condition of entropy, which is really just ignorance, further and further away from you as you understand more of this divine encryption that is the universe that we live in. And then you start thinking, okay, so I'm experiencing this oneness all around me and all of its different manifestations that are all geometric at their base. So who is the number one? And then you realize that you are. You're the number one. You are the one experiencing itself all around you. What we are experiencing in this world, the truth of it, is so much stranger than any fiction story than you could ever, ever imagine. It's not even imaginable in many cases. The divinity that we are and what we truly are is so much broader, so much more significant, and we have limited ourselves to be in this experience so that we can experience all of these things. 
so that we can live and, and feel the experiences that people would feel and then learn eventually to recognize and remember who we are as we come towards the end of our periods, whether it's our, our repetition cycle or what's called a period in this one over X number. Mm -hmm. It's always a repeating cycle. Um, and once we finally recognize it, then it's like waking up and it's the stage of the hero's journey. We're all on a hero's journey. That's why every story that we experience in the movies or whatever are always following, even video games and everything, always follow the hero's journey. So Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And all he did was take all these different cultural stories and then amalgamated them all and then said, wait, this is the same theme that every story has. This transition goes from samsara, this cycle of repetition, until the moment you realize that you're living this repetition. And then you start doing things differently. And as you start doing things differently, you now enter into, okay, I can play in this game. It's like lucid dreaming. It's transitioning the lucid dream. Have you ever lucid had lucid yeah. dreaming oh, before? Yeah. And I remember the first time I did it, I was like in the water. <laughs> I was like swimming. I, I was diving somewhere, but I was at the surface. And I realized I was in a dream and I was like, wait, I'm dreaming. So that means I can do anything in this place. So then I decided, okay, I'm gonna fly. So I actually lifted my body just you know, with my thought and intention out of the water. All my friends were still in the water and I'm like over them going, hey guys. <laughs> and I knew the whole time I was dreaming and I got to fly all around and do all this. We'll take that exact experience and now apply it to living in the material world. When you realize that you've been in the dream that is this world, you can now play in it and what Buddhists refer to this as is Lila. Lila is the experience of being able to play in the illusion and live out the aspects of your hero's journey that are associated with that new stage of dimensional perception. And that is a big shift because then you start realizing that you were the creator all along. And maybe even the decisions, like I used to think, oh, I'm successful because I work hard. Maybe I was just successful because that's the path I chose. And let's not be arrogant to believe that we could understand why everyone would choose the particular path they chose. One's man's, one man's trash, one woman's trash is another's treasure. And you know, if we're playing in a game, I would tell you at the beginning of the game or at the end of the game, I'd be like, oh yeah, this next time I wanna have an epic death or I wanna have like a experience where I'm gonna like, you know, get chased by the sheriff of Nottingham or I'm gonna end up, you know, jumping off of a building and you know, I die that way. If you knew that death wasn't real, would you change the things you do in this life? And that's really what Leela is. And once you start learning what you came here to learn and remember who you are, then everything shifts for you because you start realizing the universe is happening for you, not to you. It's happening for and through you. And that every experience you've had is something you chose because you wanted to learn a concept or a precept. So the most challenging things turn into the most beautiful realizations. Living a fulfilling life is being at ease and at one minute with that. Being able to realize that no matter what happens to you, you can surrender and you're taken care of. And that means you, you know, it changes everything. The context of everything shifts when you take on this new meaning. It's not about, I have to fight someone. I have to have a villain to battle. I have to be the hero because, you know, every single villain that ever existed always believed they were the hero. It's letting yourself transcend that belief system and construct and realize that there's more to the objective truth that really is just you've been only seeing one facet of it and seeking instead to see more and more facets of it and to learn more and through this context you also figure out that the more i learn the less i actually know